Hello, and welcome to Pursuit's webinar on how to calculate your PPP loan amount. I'm Chris Levy, Chief Credit Officer of Pursuit, and today we'll be discussing how to calculate your PPP loan amount for partnerships and other businesses such as limited liability companies that report their tax filings on IRS Form 1065. IRS 1065 is used for partnerships as well as limited by liability companies or LLCs that choose to be taxed as a partnership. Today, we're gonna to talk about what documents that you need to gather in order to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. We're also gonna talk about how to calculate your maximum loan amount, and we will provide a few examples so that you can see how this calculation works with real numbers. The main form that's included within your IRS Form 1065 that'll be utilized for the calculation of the maximum loan amount for your PPP loan is Schedule K-1. Each partner or member of the business will have a separate K-1, which will be need to be provided for the calculation. In order to calculate your maximum loan amount, the PPP loan incorporates the average monthly payroll and multiplies that by two and a half times or three and a half times for a second draw applicant who is in the food service and accommodation industry. For this calculation, we are gonna use the owner's compensation, which is listed on box 14A of the K-1 and is also known as the self-employment income. This is the amount that is provided to the partner or member of the company as their self-employment compensation. The maximum per partner or member that can be utilized here is $100,000. If the line number in schedule or in line 14A is above $100,000, we need to use $100,000 as our number in our calculation. In addition to the owner's compensation from schedule K-1, we will also utilize the employee payroll that the company pays. The best statement for understanding what the annual employee payroll is, is from a third-party payroll processing company, such as ADP, JustWorks, Gusto, or Paychex. If you have a third-party payroll processor, utilize them to provide you with a Paycheck Protection Program application payroll summary. This should be an easy to click button and they will summarize all of the information you need for the application in this document. If you don't use a third-party payroll processing company, your tax filings will be sufficient to calculate the loan amount. One of the documents that you can use is IRS Form 940, which is the annual federal unemployment tax return. If you utilize this form, box three will be utilized as part of the calculation for the total payments made to all employees. Similarly, you could also use IRS Form 941, which is the employer's quarterly payroll tax statement. All four quarters from either 2019 or 2020 will be utilized for the calculation. Once you have gathered all four forms from each quarter, you will utilize line 5C in your calculation. You will add all four of these numbers together to calculate your annual salary costs for your employees. You can also utilize state quarterly wage unemployment insurance tax reporting forms for each quarter of 2019 or 2020 instead of the IRS forms. In addition to the gross salaries for employees, you can also include fringe benefits in your calculation of total payroll costs. This would include group healthcare, disability, vision, or dental insurance, retirement statements, and other fringe benefits provided to employees. The documents that have these figures included on them may be the following. Payroll processing records, invoices from the providers, or account statements for the providers. Please remember that this is an annual calculation and we will need all of the statements to support this calculation. One of the requirements of applying for a Paycheck Protection Program loan is that the business had to be operational as of February 15th, 2020. You will need to provide an invoice, bank statement, book of record, 
or other documentation which establishes that the business was in operation at this time. Now that we've gathered the necessary documents for the application, it is now time to calculate the loan amount. This is one of the more complex loan amount calculations, so please bear with me as I go through the calculation. The main number that we are going to take is that box 14A from the K1 statement of the 1065. This must be reduced by section 179 expense deduction claimed and unreimbursed partnership expenses claimed and depletion claimed on oil and gas properties. While these exceptions are somewhat rare, it is important to utilize that K-1 statement to reduce it by this amount. From there, you will take this number and multiply it by 0 0.9235. This number will be the self-employment earnings that can be included in the calculation. Again, the net earnings figure is capped at $100,000. So if the number that you calculate here is above that, the max that can be calculated will be $100,000. You will take this figure and add it to the payroll costs from 2019 or 2020 from all employees whose principal place of residence is the United States. Again, the maximum amount per employee is $100,000, so you have to subtract out any compensation paid above this. For more information, please visit our website, which includes a payroll cost summary for explanation on the specifics regarding these payroll costs. Now that we've added together all of our possible payroll costs, we will then calculate the average monthly payroll amount by taking that total number divided, um, devised in step one and divide it by 12 to get the average monthly payroll amount. From there, we will multiply this number by two and a half times or in the event that the business is assigned a NAICS code beginning with 7-2, which is a food service or accommodation business, such as a restaurant or hotel, we then would multiply by three and a half instead of two and a half. When you take the average monthly payroll and multiply it by two and a half or three and a half for those specific businesses, you will then come to your maximum loan amount that you can apply for within the Paycheck Protection Program. We're now going to calculate a few examples so you can see this at work with specific numbers. In this example, the self-employment income of line 14A was $48,000. This is true of two owners of the partnership, each making $48,000. In addition to this, the annual employee payroll was calculated at $120,000. For our calculation, we will add these three numbers together, the 48,000 from partner number one, the $48,000 from partner number two, and the $120,000 of annual employee payroll. This gives us a total annual payroll amount of $216,000. From there, we will take this figure and divide it by 12 to get the average monthly payroll. In this example, the division gets us to an average monthly payroll of $18,000. We will then take this number and multiply it by two and a half times to get our maximum loan amount of $45,000. If this business happened to be a restaurant or hotel in the food service or accommodation industry, then this multiplication would be by three and a half times to garner a larger maximum loan amount. We will now provide an example that is slightly different and includes three owners. In this case, the owners earned $108,000, $48,000, and $48,000, respectively. We have to remember that the first owner's self-employment income is capped at $100,000. The other two owners will receive the full $48,000, plus the employee payroll of $120,000. So we add those four numbers together, the $100,000 for the first owner, the $48,000 and for the second two owners and the $120,000 or $120, in annual employee payroll to get us a total payroll amount of $316,000. From there, we will divide that annual payroll amount 
by 12 to get us an average monthly payroll of $26,333. We will then take this average monthly payroll and multiply it by two and a half times or three and a half times for a food service and accommodation business to calculate our maximum loan amount. In this case, it comes out to be $65,800. This number is rounded to the nearest hundred for accounting and documentation purposes to make it e easier on the lender and you as you go through the documentation and approval process. Now you should be able to calculate your maximum loan amount for your Paycheck Protection Program loan if you are a partnership or limited liability company which files its tax return on IRS Form 1065. If you have additional questions regarding this calculation or any questions regarding the Paycheck Protection Program, please visit these links to our website, which will provide additional information and frequently asked questions for the program. Thank you and good luck with your application to the Paycheck Protection Program.